What's going on everyone? Welcome to Robinson Motorsports. Working on Project Franken Ripper here, and I got a twisted subframe. So one of the things that I'm doing with this project, Project Franken Ripper, is doing the exact opposite of what a lot of people do with like parting bikes out. I'm actually buying all those parts from people and building a bike. One of the things I bought is a subframe. I used one right here uh, off of eBay. It was like 152 bucks. I kind of shopped around. I got what I could. Well, the issue is right here. If you look at this one, it's actually parallel with the frame. This side over here is at an angle. Take another step back here. It's it tumbled and it got hit right here. Now the frame itself is different. It's a 2012. Soap frames off of a 2012. I just wanted to make sure they matched. It bolted on. All of these bolts are finger tight. I was able to bolt it on by hand. So I know that the frame's not twisted. It's actually the subframe itself. And I kind of confirmed that with this right here. These blocks right here for the, I think they're for the, C, or no, for the air box. <laughs> this one's straight and this one's definitely cocked this way so I actually made a living for about five years as a welder fabricator um, straightening frames on semis dump trailers re-welding them things like that I hate working with aluminum that's why I outsourced welding the frame on this this I know I can probably bend back. It might crack. And if it does, I'll just send it over to Jeremy and he can weld it up, do whatever he needs to. But I need to get it into a spot where I know it's it's going to be straight and square. So the basic thing is here, the theory, is there's a, it's a box. You just want to make basic measurements. And... The first measurement I'm going to make is from this block right here to the seat mount. I believe that's the seat mount. Because I know that the seat mounts here are relatively square. You know, on a plane here, and they're going to be the same distance off of there. It's going to be something square that I know that I that's not going to be offset any like this right here. I'm not going to measure off of this bolt hole because there's not one over here. There's the two fender mounts here, the two seat mounts, and then the airbox mounts here. So I'm going to go off of the airbox mounts here because I know that they're, they're kind of messed up. And the seat mounts over here. So if I take my tape measure, go from here to here, I'm 14 and 3 quarters. And then if I go from right here to here I'm 15 and 3 eighths so I know that I'm not square what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it in my vise and try to bend this let's see which way am I going this I'm gonna bend in this end of it this ends gonna go out this end needs to go out and this one needs to go in even if you look right here, you can see it's kind of cocked up this way. It should come out as I'm twisting these, this. So I'm, I'm vicing here, I'm clamping here, and I'll just be moving this bar here and this bar here. The reason I'm doing that is the only 
support these two and these two mounts are solid for sure because they bolt right in this is the only spot that's going to bend this angle here is not going to bend and this angle here is not going to bend so i need to bend it basically at this joint on each side of it so let's throw it in the vise and see if we can mess this thing up oh by the way um as soon as i mounted this i noticed that it was bent i took a couple of pictures sent it to the guy that i bought it from and he actually refunded me all of my money and the shipping so this subframe is free it's a freebie which is awesome but it's bent so if i can fix this that's 150 152 bucks that i can get back out of this project so hopefully i can fix this Even in the vise, you can see that this thing is bent. Like, you're looking straight down the vise here. This one's definitely in, and that one's that way. So, I'm going to refine it a little bit and see what happens. Okay, I got one to move. Let's see if I can get this other one to. There we go. Alright, if you use the level here as a straight edge, assuming that the bottom of this is square and flat, parallel to each other, I mean, it's decent, it's magnetic and it's close enough you can use a piece of bar stock um i wouldn't use a piece of wood because they kind of have more warps in them than uh, machined or extruded metals so using this as a straight edge if we go across the top of it back here we can see it's it's twisted there this side's not too bad this side is definitely rolled in this way. If we come up here, everything looks pretty hunky-dory. Pretty good there. Pretty good there. Then if you stand back and you look at these, this one actually looks perpendicular to the ground. This one is rolled in like that. So I need to grab onto this somehow and twist the end of this more. Because I know from here to there is even decent. Don't look at the level. You don't want that. You want these planes right here. But when I come back here, it kind of goes haywire. And you can see in the mounts here that this is actually rolled out. This one's good. This one's just rolled out and maybe twisted a little. This is cast. It's not going to bend that much. Not as easily as extruded aluminum like this is. So I gotta grab onto this somehow, roll that out, and and go from there. So I did a bunch of twisting. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this real quick and see where we're at. It was I don't even remember the measurements before. It was 14 and 3 quarters and 15 and 3 eighths. So if you split that in half, you got like... 14 and 15 sixteenths If my math is correct, I'd be amazed Either way we're gonna measure this and then it they should be the same or damn near I mean if you're a sixteenth off You put you you roll with the punches you get what you get so From here to here we'll go 15 and an eighth Yeah, I'll take that. And this side's going to be lower, but 15 and 3 sixteenths. So, I'm close. I'm within ballpark of these. Like, they're, they're in the spot. These are in the location they need to be. 
on this plane, but they're obviously twisted a little bit this way. So I'm gonna try mounting it back on the bike and see what it looks like. Mount it all up. I'm really close. Like I had to manhandle it a little bit to get it into place. But if you look here, well, first of all, my stand is pretty level. I mean, leaning on the line a little bit, but I'll, I'll take it. Just take note of that. Right here, up against these mounts, level. I can deal with that. It's close enough. Right here, pretty level. On top where the seat rubs, we're level. Come back here where the fender is, and we're way off. So, looking at it, this whole debacle, bait, debating what's going on here, I still think that the front here, the front needs to go in on this side a little bit, go out on this side. I had to push this bottom in this way this bottom I had to push in a little bit this way too but if you look there's a lot of trauma right here because it's dimpled in and this seems to be like the the one that's the bad one that it's, it's the bad egg that I can't really see what's going on with it if you look down these at the weld it's kind of pulled in a little bit I'm not too sure about that but it seems to be consistent on both sides maybe a little bit more on this one which is gonna push it more that way so what I need to do is twist this one this way twist this one this way just a little bit more this bolt right here was a little tough to get in I had to manhandle it just a little bit but taking this side and twisting it definitely helped get this cross member right here nice and level plumb with the rest of it uh, I can measure here and show you but I'll tell you right now it's 15 and an eighth it's exactly where it needs to be it's still square up top and it's definitely visually more appealing than it was before and like I said or like I showed you before right here that's like the biggest thing to me is I want to make sure that my rear fender doesn't look all twisted and out of the way because it's, it's definitely a sign of a bent subframe. So, super happy I was able to fix this. I just saved myself 150. I didn't even, I'm not even going to look to see how much another one is because I fixed this one. Alright, I got this subframe nice and squared set up. It's perfect. I'm super happy about it that's gone I just looked up to see how much one would be if I bought it today off of eBay and we're looking at like 144 to 150 bucks used don't even know if those are bent but I know this one's square and it's gonna work good this project is really starting to take shape this is what I have so far plus the motor cylinder is at power seal right now getting replated I got the bottom end to put together on the next episode, so stick around, subscribe, and I'll see everyone on the next one.